Today's city of Zagreb expanded from two medieval settlements, Gradic and Kaptol, settled on two neighboring hills and in mutual conflicts throughout most of the history. The first written mention of Zagreb dates back from the year 1094, the same year that saw the founding of capital diocese. So this date is taken as the official birthday of Croatia's capital. The medieval town of Gradec was surrounded by defence walls and forts, and its shape and streets layout has seen little to no change until today. Entry to Gradec was possible through six city gates, out of which one still remains to this day, Kamenita Vrata, or the Stone Gate. At the rectangular tower with a road passage is a small chapel with a painting of Our Lady of the Stone Gate, the patron of the city of Zagreb. Many residents and travellers come here to light a candle and pray for their well-being. At a nearby distance, there is Zagreb's oldest working pharmacy, Cernom Orlo, which has been continually in business since 1355. The center of the upper town is St. Mark's Square, which was once a place of trade and public events. Today, at the building of Banski Dvori, the historical official residence of the Croatian Bans, or Viceroys, is currently occupied by the Croatian government, with the Croatian parliament at the other side of the square. The Church of St. Marco is the oldest parish church in Zagreb and one of the most recognizable symbols of the city. The Cravat Regiment guard change is particularly impressive to see at Mark Square. At the streets of Upper Town, you will meet numerous personalities from the rich history of city of Zagreb, and they will be glad to tell you their stories. In summer months, numerous courtyards of Upper Town open their gates for visitors as they turn themselves into real little city oases of fun and entertainment. Many concerts, exhibitions, poetry readings and simple socializing take us back to some old times. Lotrischak Tower was part of the former defense system of Gradec. At its top is the cannon which shoots each day at noon to mark the exact time. There are several theories why this cannon is in the same function since 1877, but the official story is that this was a great way for the church bell ringers to mark the time. Many tourists find this as one of the most entertaining attractions. Even when you know the cannon will go off, the volume can still shake you up a bit. Another interesting attraction is the Zagreb funicular, the shortest one in the world, 
as it is only 66 metres long. It was officially put into operation in 1890 and it connects the upper and lower town. Certainly take the opportunity to ride and enjoy the view. Young and old, enjoy the beautiful Strossmayr promenade with the most breathtaking view of Zagreb. Zagreb Cathedral was built in 1217. The Tatars had almost completely demolished it in 1242. After the big earthquake of 1880, many buildings in Zagreb got badly ruined, along with the cathedral which suffered immensely. A thorough renovation was completed in 1906, when the cathedral gained its current appearance, with two slender towers reaching the height of 105 meters. The central square in Zagreb is the Ban Jelacic Square. Until the year 1930, this was the place of the city's main food market, Harmica. Today, the square is a favorite meeting point for many and a main spot for a variety of cultural and entertainment events. On the east side of the square is the Mandushevas fountain and according to a legend, this well is where the name of the city of Zagreb was coined. Legend has it that it was here that a beautiful girl, Manda, met a knight on horseback who asked her for some water from the well by asking her, Manda, dear, grab some water, hence the name Zagreb. And the well was named after the young girl. Today, Mandushevas has a modern design and you can throw coins in and make a wish. Apparently, most of the wishes come true. Zagreb's market, Dolets, was opened in 1930 after Harmica was moved from its original spot at Ban Jelacic Square to a new, more spacious location. In the open part of the food market, there is a vast amount of produce, fruit and vegetables from all parts of Croatia, but mostly from surrounding parts of Zagreb region. Many people here start their day by going up to the city market to get the freshest ingredients for their lunch. At the lower, closed part of the market, there are many milk, cheese and meat products of all sorts. Especially interesting part of the market is where ladies, popularly called kumice, sell their fresh cottage cheese and sour cream. A very usual food combination, traditional even for this region. Tkalčičeva Street is one of the most interesting and most picturesque streets in Zagreb. In the olden days, there was a stream here with numerous mills and it used to separate the two opposing settlements, Kaptol and Gradec. Today, Tkalčičeva Street is a favorite promenade and the entertainment center of the city life, filled with great bars and restaurants.
streets of Donigraud, lower part of town, are always flooded with people rushing about their business, or in total contrast, enjoying their quiet moment sipping coffee at one of the numerous cafes. Coffee culture in Zagreb is indeed very strong, woven into daily lives as a ritual and a part of tradition. In the summer months, during the festival of street performers, Cest is the best. City streets and squares are filled with interesting performers from all over the world. Make sure to plan your stay in the city when this wacky and wonderful festival is on. You will be glad you came for all the crazy fun. Zrinjevac is the biggest and the most beautiful park in the central part of Zagreb. Always filled with young people chasing fun or lounging on the grass. There's also concerts in the pavilion and exhibitions in the open area. Zrinjevac is part of the famous Lenuzzi Horseshoe a sequence of parks and squares in the very center of the city, designed in the form of a green horseshoe. Recently, Zagreb's been made richer for one very interesting and unique museum, the Museum of Broken Relationships. Located in Cirilometodska Street in the upper town, it is dedicated to the memories of unsuccessful love and relationships. It contains objects left behind by many former lovers, accompanied by a short text that describes the fate of these relationships and donated items. Besides mostly entertaining and wise stories, there are a few really sad and tragic ones. We definitely recommend a visit. The city centre is full of excellent restaurants and snack bars, and you're sure to find something to your liking. With traditional Mediterranean dishes and international cuisine, this restaurant offers an interesting combination of the two. served beef carpaccio with aged grana padano and pickled onions, followed by bream carpaccio with summer Istrian truffles. The main course was wok with vegetables and shrimp. Fillet with cream yellow carrots and aperol, and fondant potatoes and top specialty veal liver a la Venetian, and some corn polenta with gorgonzola. Roundup of this excellent lunch that was some superb dessert. Cheesecake with currant and blueberry, and pistachio and mint sorbet, and finally lemon eclairs. Light, superbly prepared, and incredibly tasty.
one of the symbols of Zagreb, and a proposal for a comfortable and excellent accommodation is Sheraton Hotel, located in the city centre at a few minutes walking distance from the central square. features 306 welcoming and modernly equipped rooms and suites, including the impressive and luxurious presidential suite with breathtaking views of Zagreb. The hotel's excellent restaurant offers some superb cuisine, a blend of international and Croatian, with some inevitable Zagreb specialties. Currently, as you can see, our chef de cuisine, Matija, is preparing Maximir steak with uh, wild uh, garlic, accompanied with fresh vegetables and spinach with potatoes. Uh, we also accompany the best of Croatian wines with our dishes. Timeless elegance, impeccable service and a privileged location in Zagreb city centre are only a few of the reasons why this hotel is the number one choice for business travellers as well as for those on vacation. As we enjoyed our Maximir steak, it is time for us to visit that part of town. Maximir Park was designed back in 1839 in an English landscape style. Many residents enjoy walking and recreation in this beautiful nature. The park has five lakes, rich in interesting species of fish and ducks, turtles and swans. Of the more interesting buildings, we must point out the Swiss House, the Lookout Pavilion, the Echo Pavilion and the Chapel of St. Juray.
Sundek Lake is a popular place for walking and recreation, very near the city centre. On the big lake, there are excellent walking trails and paths for cyclists and rollerbladers, and there are many enthusiasts exercising here daily. Yarun is the largest lake in Zagreb, and it is organized as a sports and recreation center. The path around the lake covers a distance of 6 kilometers and is fantastic for cycling, jogging and rollerblading. Along the path there are several sports facilities, so we can say that this is the sportiest recreational park in the city of Zagreb, in the true sense of the word. Within Yarun, there's also a rowing club, as well as several other sports clubs. Regatta Field is often a host to many competitions and regattas. And on the big lake, Sailing is very popular. Out here on Lake Yaron you can also try out the increasingly popular sport of wakeboarding. It is time for us to unveil the secret connection between Zagreb and Nautics. Since 1948, Zagreb is richer for having its own nautical institute. Institute of Engineering in the field of maritime and green technologies. The specialty of the Institute is development of experimental product all the way to prototype development, design, surveillance, calculations, measurements and testing. The state-of-the-art CNC machine designs model ships in any given scale with built-in various sensors and measuring instruments. Later on, testings are made in a few large pools, checking characteristics and features of given models. What will be the maximum speed, power, material strain? Experts of the Nautical Institute have answers for all these questions before the construction of the real ship prototype. In the 276-metre pool, it is possible to simulate great strains and speed, and even high waves, with help of the wave generator.
cavitation is a word all engine manufacturers detest. This phenomenon adversely affects properties and operation of marine engines, and propeller designers work hard to avoid it. Cavitation has uh, several uh, detrimental effects on uh, propeller uh, action, such as cavitation erosion, uh, noise, uh, efficiency, lack of e efficiency, and uh, vibration. In these pools, various conditions of design perfecting are tested and simulated, managing to completely avoid the occurrence of cavitation in manufacturing new marine engines. We had the honor to personally try out the high-speed interceptor M46, one of the newest products, which is currently undergoing testing in the sea. A super-fast motorboat for special operations, which we'll get to find out more about in one of our next episodes.